Taking off on a cross-country road trip in a tiny car with your spouse for work might sound like some people's worst nightmare. <laughs> but for me, it was a dream come true. And now that I'm back home again, I'm going to share some of the sights and stops my wife Libby and I made in our travels. Plus, I'm going to share a few roadblocks we ran into that might help you avoid a couple of the pitfalls taking a cross-country road trip in a tiny car with your spouse for work. I don't even always want to be in the same house as my spouse. This was one of the issues. Are you sure you're not going to get a divorce? A lot of guys pulled me aside and yeah. said that. Huh. Well, I'm glad you're here. I will say. You made no it. No troubles with Libby. Siri drove me crazy. Siri was the woman uh, of your nightmares. She was the one. Do you know when you pull off for gas, she doesn't believe it? Return to the route. Return <laughs> to the route. Lady, can well, I get some gas, please? You should have just used old-fashioned maps, I think. I should have used old-fashioned maps. I think that maps. would have been better. But speaking of maps, you did, you did sort of track this, yes. right, all okay. of it. And I, I kind of want you to start us off on this okay. journey by, like, telling us about this. Well, you see where uh, Sioux Falls is there, right? Yeah. So we went up to Pier, and then we went up to uh, Bismarck. Then we went over to uh, Medora, which is a fabulous place. Then we went across Montana, three stops, uh, Billings, Helena, and Missoula. Then we went to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Then we went to the northern part of uh, Washington uh, to visit my aunt. Then we went down the Pacific Coast Highway all the way down to uh, San Bernardino. And then we went the Route 66 route to, uh, to St. Louis. And then we took the Mississippi River roads up to, um, to see my mother-in-law. And then we were home. And we were wrong. I said it would take 5,000 miles. It took 6,798 miles. That's a miscalculation. That is a miscalculation. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually longer. I mean, we talked before you left, but that's actually longer, I guess, seeing it on the map than I thought you were going. Yes. Or farther. So you take a calipers and say, oh, I'm going to go maybe 200 miles by the crow flies. Nope. If I were to do that again, you'd go 100 miles because the crow flies a lot, especially if you take the scenic routes, which yeah. is what we did, right? So you're telling me you planned this on a paper map with a caliper, but then you only used Siri all the way around? Absolutely right. <laughs> because okay. I wanted to t I say, what, and she says, well, you can take the interstate yeah. and get there faster. And I said, no, I want to take the scenic route. And she was going to take six hours. And you were like, okay. Okay, that's what we're going to do. So what was the best part of your trip? That the destination is the journey. Man, I learned a lot. So if I'd only known this, when you go on vacation, maybe you think it starts when we get there. Here's what you're going to say from now on. The minute you get in the car, we're on vacation. And, and all of a sudden, everything changes, right? Because this is part of the vacation. When you're shopping at the last minute to get some groceries, this is part of the vacation. Your attitude changes. You're more laid back. I'm driving down some beautiful roads on the scenic road, highway where it's 55 miles an hour through some of the best country in the world. And people behind me are riding my bumper because they want to go 70 miles an hour in the 55. I would say, buddy, enjoy this journey and I thought I have made the same mistake and so that has totally changed but you were making everyone behind you enjoy the journey with you at this time yeah maybe they were yeah or maybe they tried to pass me in a dangerous curve I do like that tip you know I think especially when you're traveling with young kids yes. you know, in the stage of life it's like the traveling gives you some of the anxiety are they gonna be are they gonna be evil in the car mm -hmm. how many times are we gonna have to stop you know and they get that tension, and it's very interesting because last in, in uh, October, we were going to make a quick weekend trip with the family, and we were getting packed up, and we were running behind schedules, and I was in you know, a store to get some stuff, and I was stressed out, I'm mad at the person in front of me, and all of a sudden I went, I'm on vacation. Boo. Okay. I'm going to try that. We're just heading out to, I think, Deadwood in, in yeah. the later part of the month. Or so, yeah, I'm we, try kid, I'm kids were on vacation. Now is the vacation. Maybe I'll start right now. They might not like that here. That's the other thing. It's possible now, as I was thinking about this, I could go on vacation every day for like a half an hour. And I was talking to a guy just two days ago about this. He was caught up. He, he's from a farm. I said, just hop in the combine. Yeah. And he knew what I meant. Because riding on a combine, if you're a farm kid, it's, it's cool. Well, not this half hour, though, okay? You can't right. go on vacation this half hour. Tell us about Route 66. That's iconic. 
Route 66 is iconic, and as they developed it over time, they made it wider and made it straighter and changed the name. So not a lot of Route 66 is Route 66, but I'll tell you what, there's a couple of hundred miles in Missouri and Oklahoma that are fabulous. So is what we were just looking at, is that actually, was that actually the real part of it? That's the real part okay. of it right there. And then it changes to something, you know, a broader and wider and faster and kind of takes the romance out. And, but you're saying that the romance stayed with you and Libby. So you were Abs smiles oh, and look smiles at that, honey. and smiles. Yes, look at that. Her hair was ruined on the trip. Her hairdresser says, your hair has a lot of damage. And she says, what do you think? 30 days in a convertible. Yeah. yeah. Now, you say one of the prettiest things you saw, though, were the redwoods. Yeah. Very serene. Look at that. Now, if you were to zoom that picture in, my wife is about the size of a pinhead. That's how long that tree is. And Did you there, sing a little too, the Redwood Forest? I sat in awe. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it was called Founders, <laughs> Founders Grove, and it's a little off the beaten path, but you can walk one mile in this place and it just your blood pressure just drops. It's fabulous. Desert mm -hmm. landscape. You yes, saw a lot on this trip. A lot of desert. Saw a lot of different kinds of rocks and plants. Every vista, every every picture you see was because 30 seconds before there was a better vista. Oh, I mean, <laughs> this is this is always the one that's second best. Right. We were. That's why you were really driving so slow. You were taking photos. Abs. 55 miles an hour. Yeah. Um, before we are done here, though, the heaviest Christmas tree. What are you talking about? So those are my books. Oh. I ordered 500 more of these books that I'm giving away. I'm not actually I'm selling them for the holidays <laughs> and I said uh, that'll be my Christmas is when those books are gone so so they are did they stack them like that for you when they no them? I did that I thought okay. it would be kind of fun it was fun I wish they would have done it for you though <laughs> so you recommend this you do it again absolutely will you do it again I think I'm gonna do it again and I want you to do it too are we gonna go together no, no. we're never okay. go together I'll never talk to you again if that happens <laughs> I'm a great traveler we could have some fun I'm gonna start I thinking think about it would. now I think you should I think thinking. you should